95.7 The Hog, Riggs, and Guy, and the Morning Hog Brew Review with that guy, Vinny, from SR Parat. Oh, you got, you got a bite? You got, oh, Are they oh, fishing oh, or fighting? Oh, <laughs> Man, it's all you. I you use 13 pound test. My you bad. win. Uh, hey, we hooked a big one today. Absolutely. Who is Lago it? Nidus. Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you do it. We have. Uh, uh, we have Krista as a special guest with us again. Uh, she works with me. Uh, we met her a couple weeks ago, so she's back in. Um, we're going to see a little bit more on here. Welcome back, Krista. And then um, we have Andy uh, from La Gonitas. Andy! Welcome, man. Thanks for having me. First of all, I love your American Top Team hat. Thank you. Uh, we're going to do about a 90-minute uh, MMA conversation right after the beer kicks oh, in. Are we nice. going to get into MMA yeah, while yeah. we're here? Yeah, well, we could. Weekend. Okay, I you like You want to go? Yeah, let's roll. All right. Oh, well, let's think of it. Uh, got some grappling tips from Andy first. Uh, we got to get beer tips today, and uh, we'll look at all the options that you have for us We today. have a plethora here today. We did. Yeah, we brought excited. a bunch. Um, so before we get started on these, if you haven't, you know, people are new to Lagunitas. If you haven't had Lagunitas IPA, come out from under the rock that you're living <laughs> under and, uh, and, and, and try it out. You're it's missing out. Yeah. Number one selling IPA in the world. It's the one when I was home brewing. Uh, it was introduced into Florida in 2007. And it, to me, it calibrated me for IPAs, made me fall in love with it. And I've been in the beer business ever since. Um, so it's, you know, it's a well-rounded 6.2% alcohol IPA, uh, English crystal malt, and, you know, nice dry hoppy finish. That's all we know. It's a delicious West Coast style IPA, yeah. and um, I dare say they probably set the standard for West Coast IPAs, wouldn't you say? I, I would say that in my experience, right, that's that's the way I was introduced to it. Absolutely. So. Uh, and it's a great beer, and it's it's actually national now. It's all over the place. It's not global. just here. Yeah. Yep. Global. Or really? I meant global. I'm sorry. I was yeah. trying to expand it out a little bit more, but you're absolutely yeah. right. Yeah, well, this this is where we uh, this is where you start to know that uh, that if you have people, like you said, if you have people who don't know yet, this is your chance to find out about it. If you're listening to this, you you uh, you got to go get yourself some right afterwards. Uh, if you're watching this, you're going to get to see it, and Absolutely. it'll really wet your taste buds a little bit. Right? Yeah, we're looking forward to. So, um, Andy, we kind of have a lineup you gave me originally uh, to start it. with. So, if you want to go ahead and introduce the first one, and we'll start with it. So Lagunitas is all about stories. Um, the, the tagline forever has been beer speaks, people mumble. Um, <laughs> but there's a lot of stories that we can mumble about. Uh, 12th and Never, our founder, Tony McGee, um, from the 90s till eh, about 2015, really resisted putting beer in a can. And we as a sales team were really persistent and said, uh, you know, we want it, we need it, we have to have it. And he said, we'll have it on the 12th of Never. Ha, ha, ha. Really? So... Here That's it, is. it. We canned it. I haven't tasted did, it yet, now, but it smells amazing. Now, did he just not buy into the fact that the, the taste is going to be the same coming out of a you can know, as a bottle? The what? dude is a great guy, yeah. genius, right? But he, he is quirky, and, and when he puts his foot down, yeah. sometimes it takes a while for that foot to come back up. Right. So, <laughs> I get you. I, I think it was more just the. To Urcus, you know? huh, yeah, hung on to the old school a little bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Keep, if you keep him going, eh, nah, nah. Yeah. we'll yeah. do it one day, but then not we today. Did yeah. uh, so it's a 5.5% alcohol. Okay. Eh, pale ale ish. Yeah. Right? I right. mean, again, we, we make IPAs. So it's going to be hoppy, it's going to be dry, it's uh. going to be West Coast and, and, and relatively balanced. Cheers. See the so real good. nice uh, hop finish on it when you drink it. Uh, you know, like he says, yeah. it's it's not quite a pale. <laughs> yeah. More please. Not, yeah, you can. <laughs> yeah, it's not quite a, an IPA. It's that in between. But you have a real nice finish. Um, what hops are you using in this? Um, you know, uh, I don't know. Okay, no problem. Yeah. It, it almost looks like a citra spinning. citra back. Is that what I'm getting on that? Or you might be getting some of that. Okay. Absolutely. Well, it's real good. It's got a real nice bitterness and a real nice um, uh, citrus finish on the back. I don't know. Definite hot yeah. summer day yeah. drinking beer. Absolutely. Absolutely. For yeah. sure. This is this is going to be, profile-wise, it's going to be real straightforward. Yeah. It, like you said, they're, they're strong citrusy kind of components, almost that grapefruity kind of kind of aroma. You're going to get it on the after flavor as well. Mild bitterness. It's fleeting. It goes away right, right away. Uh, lighter malt body. So it's going to, you know, again, it's, it's balanced. It's dry. It's drinkable. Absolutely. Slightly alcoholic. I kind of feel like this beer's alive a little bit because it does have a little, like you said, it has a, it, it jumps in, it goes away. That yeah. bitterness is there, and then. And, and a really it. cool part about it is it comes in a 192 stovepipe, they call it. So um, if you're out there on the beach and you don't want to have to go back and get a second beer, well, yeah. you can just have one of these. It takes you out on both of them. So. Why one? Called? How about two? What is it called again? Uh, stovepipes. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's it looks like a stovepipe. Yep. Well, and you know, a quick shout out to Abe Lincoln, our uh, president of the day. There you go, stovepipe hat. The Absolutely. original, like the, it. the OG, right there. The OG. Yeah. For little known fact, he had the Lagunitas logo on the top of that stovepipe hat. Did he really? Yep. I, I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I learned okay. it. 
in science. Did you? Yeah. Last no. year? Uh, yeah, last year, yes. It was, it was a non-credit short course I took online. Uh, it was on the short bus. I think that's what was happening. I was drinking during it. Uh, that's exceptional, though. That's very, very good. And that would be, if that were all, that would be great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That'd be a great day right there. Absolutely. And there's a lot more. But guess what? There isn't. Uh, there is more. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, move on to the second one, which is the... Something Easy. Something Easy is our, uh, our next foray into cans. It's uh, also going to be a pale, slightly hoppy, okay. you know, pretty dry, pale ale-ish. But it has a, a, a wheat malt base. All right. uh, it's also going to have a little bit different of a hop character where the first one was more citrusy and piney. Um, this is going to be more fruity, uh, like, like stone fruit, like, uh, like, like peach and apricot kind of character. Okay. Um, you're going to get a little bit of a fuller mouthfeel, right? Um, and then, you know, I, as you can see, the oh, yeah. color is slightly different. It's a little hazier. I mean, the know. can lends you to think that this is a, uh, like, a, like a beach beer just because of colors. Yeah, well, Very- I mean... You know, there's no styles that? written yeah. down in uh, in any of this. So I said, you know, the first one is a pale ale ish. It's kind of kind of a pale ale ish, but they're right. definitely markedly different. Um, it's it's something easy. Well, that's, I I was up in uh, Pennsylvania not too long ago, and, and that's all I got was Lagunitas. But I got the Lagunitas something something. Is that a play off of that? Um, you know, originally it was supposed to. It was yeah. supposed to be a, a play off of a little something something, like a line extension. In fact. The alcohol percentage on this is 5.7. We're going to taste a little something next, but it's 7.5. So it was an inverted okay. inverted take. Um, wow. But it, it came out nothing like it, really. It's, uh, it's drier. It's, it's got a different kind of, uh, kind of that fruity component mm-hmm. that little something something doesn't have. Um, you know, they, they might have called it a little something else or a little something different, but they called it something <laughs> easy instead. Nice. Yeah. So can you say, Andy, that's one thing about Lagunitas is a – they brew close to style, not necessarily on point of a BJCP um, style, but close to it. Say, hey, let me take this pale and make it almost a pale, make it this. and For sure, for sure. Um, so I'm a, I'm a BJCP nationally ranked judge, right, which basically just means that I've, I've spent too much time drinking. Good. And, That's a um, good thing. Yeah. Uh, and I did a study a couple years ago before working for the brewery um, and how winning medals at the Great American Beer Festival and the World Beer Cup – correlate to your growth in the top 50 breweries in the u.s okay and i I noticed for sure there was a direct link uh if you win more medals at the time between 2006 and and 2012 um you rose in the pack you grew market share over over the other other breweries even though everybody was growing some people grew more and it was directly correlated i thought to to winning medals and there was a link one exception lagunitas really Yep. Um, at the time, zero medals, zero entries. Okay. So it's one <laughs> of those right. things, man. We, you know, we, we were the number three, or depending on, on how you classify craft, right? Um, we're the number three craft brewery in the country. It's Sam Adams, Sierra Nevada, us, okay. and then New Belgium is, is after us. Um, so we make, we make a, a, a large quantity of liquid. I, I would use another word, but this is a kid-friendly show. Yeah. So, well, again, we'll put it right here in this box. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot. That's, yeah, that's a, lot. a lot. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. But, uh, you know, there's, there's just no, you know, like you said, um, style, style-ish, yeah, but it's more so um, we allow the brewers to, to be really creative, and if it doesn't fit within style fidelity, so be it. Absolutely. And I that's love wh- that. And that's why they do so, so well as well, uh, because the beers are a little bit different. You know, yeah. you grab a pale ale and you drink a straight up pale, and you're like, okay, and you go, oh, this is going to be another pale, and you drink it, and you go, wait a minute, this is not a 12th and never is not like a regular pale. What's going on right. here? So that's the key component to that is they go a little bit outside that line, mm-hmm. which is great. And they've always gone a little bit outside that line. Is that um, what throws judges in those kind of competitions? <clears throat> if something is not genre specific and you're like, you're, you're expecting a taste and you're like, well, that's not going to work? Is that what? Yeah. Would- I, I would say, um, all right, so. As, as a judge myself, you know, and, and a, a previously competitive home brewer, yeah. right? Um, you know, we, we go in and we're, we're trying to make things, and, and the styles are kind of like this range. And it's think of it more like a plateau. You don't want to shoot for the middle, let's okay. say, because that doesn't make, mean you're, you're, you're more within the, the style guidelines. It's, it's a plateau at the top, right? right. Um, but if you're, if you're an archer and you're shooting for the bullseye in the middle, you can hit anywhere in that red spot, yeah. right? That'll, that'll, that'll work. Lagging is kind of just, uh, you know, reminds me of... Um, the, uh, the 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 cartoon um, uh, Robin Hood, right? Where okay. he dresses up and he 
shoots, you know, kind of crazy, and he shoots off of a bird, up yeah. in, you know, in the sky, and he's all parkouring of a sudden, it, yeah. it all over the place. Yeah, yeah and, it, and it lands through the bullseye anyway. That's that's, that's kind of what Lagunitas' approach is more like. It's you know, kind of kind of uh, I don't want to say random. They they deliver it. They know what they're doing, but uh, they just have no interest. They, go around they just go in, in, a roundabout. In, in, pretty in much styles. go balls to the wall and see what sticks. Yeah. Yeah. And it's 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 amazing. Balls. Yeah. The, the yeah. growth. You know, they're, they're talking about how Crafts is starting to plateau a little bit and, and level out. Um, these guys are still, for us, they're growing double digits. And you said for Florida, they're growing double digits. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're very fortunate that, um, and we're doing it with our IPA and, yep. and a little something and, and these, these products that we're tasting today. It's, it's all the same core products that we've had, except for the, the Some Easy is the only new thing this year. Absolutely. So, and it's just been grow after grow after grow. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's just, a, it shows it's a very solid, uh, good product. Yeah. So. Yeah. We, we can go on and, 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 and talk about, you know, the stylistic fidelity and how we're, how we're ranking. But again, the moniker is beer speaks people mumble, right? So I'm, I'm mumbling with you guys today and the beers, you know, people are deciding which beers to, to buy and drink. Feels like that should be the name of the show. Can we change that? Is it too late? Absolutely. To that? <laughs> beer speaks. We mumble. Yeah. That's my favorite beer, anyway. So oh, why not? Can use promotion out of it. <laughs> I feel it's a perfect tie-in. Well, I, I'll we'll be honest. Later. You know, both of you guys, your eyes lit up when I told you Lagunitas was coming in this I know, week, and I, know. Uh, I wasn't sure. I thought I was going to come in and find you just yeah. in your shirt, laying pantless on the floor, but <laughs> you were all good and set. So <laughs> it was all to poo care. We need to poo oh, in yeah, it. Yeah, yep, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But uh, guy, I'm glad you're dressed and you're in here. So we're all good. If this thing was full of honey, though, look out. Just to tell you how good this beer is, it's. It's the only thing I order when I go to the bar, but actually I don't order it anymore. As soon as I walk through, yeah, they know. Boom, they you have Lagunitas right in front of me. <laughs> they know it. So. Look at Vinny's giant hand of that tiny little bottle yeah, you're about uh, to pick uh, up oh, over there. I mean, the cans made it look normal, right. but here we go. Yeah, so the stovepipes are actually made for Vinny's hands. Yes, you know? absolutely. The, the, the to make him feel ones, normal. It makes like me Andre feel like I'm a normal human being <laughs> with that. He can fit it in society with those hands. Absolutely. All right, beer number three is in a tiny little bottle. It's actually normal size, but <laughs> Benny's hands aren't to scale. What are we going for next, Andy? So this is the little something something. Um, yeah. Yeah. Again, this is uh, this is the big sister cousin to uh, something easy. It's been around for a number of years at this point. Um, Jeremy Marshall is our is our uh, current brewmaster. Mm-hmm. Um, he designs most of the recipes from this point forward, and um, I mean he oversees production in in Petaluma, Chicago, and if we open any other breweries anywhere right. else in the world, he's the guy who would oversee quality. Um, and this was his first batch, his first first commercial beer with Lagunitas, first recipe, and they didn't know what to call it. Um, it's you know half wheat and malt, which, as he says, is about like this half. The other half okay. is <laughs> okay. You know, <laughs> it, it, is not that. Um, it's you know heavily dry hop, pretty citrusy, piney in the aroma and, and, and flavor. Again, you're gonna get that same kind of heavier mouthfeel, slightly heavier mouthfeel as you got in the something easy right. because of that wheat malt and the torrified wheat, like puff wheat. Remember right. puff wheat cereal. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, the guys uh, you know in, in California or uh, you know Northern California, they they sample some of the other other uh, botanical offerings of, yeah. the, of the region, and um, they like puff puff right cereal and puff wheat. And now that you've said it, see, in. you put it in my head. Now <laughs> I feel like I taste it. You know, now I feel like oh yeah, I've eaten that cereal dry before, and it feels like that would be a perfect beer taste. If you dry hopped it and made it into liquid, yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's this is the one that I was drinking up north, and yeah. it's the only beer I drank when I was up there. I didn't nice. get the regular. This stuff. is the I one that you texted me the letter L fourteen times. <laughs> <I remember. laughs> he was trying to type Lagunitas, it just didn't work out. It but didn't. I, I knew what you meant, though. He's well, not lying, by the yeah, way. To be really honest, this is seven point five percent, and yeah. it, it drinks like a two percent. Yeah, it's, it doesn't have it, that. It's very easy. Um, the first time that Lagunitas came into our area, I had to have a meeting with all of our sales sales staff, and we had did a whole big production, and and I was talking about Lagunitas, and I was talking about Lagunitas, I was drinking a uh, little something something as mm-hmm. i was talking about it and let's yeah. just say the meeting got a little more interesting the further i went with the meeting the I more bet. of this i drank and yeah. it just went down so easy it's just that's why it's it's, it's it's a great beer it really is it's one of my favorite from lagunitas little something something always has been we just brought it in on draft so you're going to see it out there and it counts on draft and you got to in the bottles out here and it is just um one of my favorites we've talked about this before what is the element that keeps a higher volume alcohol content beer from not tasting that way what um you know it's 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 about striking a balance yeah um and that doesn't necessarily mean an equal amount of multi-character to hoppy character it's about being a master of what you're doing yeah understanding the four ingredients that we throw in you know the hops water malt and yeast right and uh and balancing the flavor profile in in a way that 
you know, it's not gonna not gonna beat you over the head with the alcohol. We, right. we like to sneak it in. Okay. So yeah. it, it's also got a pretty heavy amount of weedy esque ishness. Okay. Which yeah. kind of rounds it, smooths it, and yeah. gives it a better mouthfeel, so it doesn't taste like you're drinking that high alcohol. You're not getting what they call the heat, which is that little bit of burn from the high alcohol. Yeah. You're not getting any of that. So it's just a really good, solid beer. You you could drink this on the beach if you wanted to. It's up to you. Uh, but it's it's a great beer. Uh, it's just I keep saying it, but it's one of my favorite. Uh, is the little something something? Yeah. I've enjoyed that beer ever since we picked it up and brought it in. So yeah, there's more beer. Absolutely, more tiny little beers over there in your big hands. All right. <laughs> What's next? So. That's our that's our you know some of our core lineup right, uh, the mm-hmm. year round offerings. Okay. At this point now we're getting into the limited beers and, um, as we like to call them, our our one hitters. Okay. So, um, the Waldo's Ale. Now this is maybe one of the coolest stories we have. Okay. Um, so it's it's Waldo's plural, not not Waldo like where's Waldo? Okay. Um, so the story goes in the seventies, um, sixties or seventies. There were these uh, four guys that hung out on a wall and they were called the Waldos. They were high Ooh. school students. Okay. And um, one of their brothers left them a map to go mm. find a, uh, oh. a, a botanical garden, a hidden okay. garden. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, So they went on a treasure hunt uh, mm-hmm. to go find it. And they decided to meet out by the statue in front of the school at 420 to go out and, and, and do this. Right. Um, they never found anything. You know, so <laughs> really? They, they kept hunting. <laughs> go figure. Right. 420 was... <laughs> right. But uh, they, they, they kept getting in the vehicle and, you know, rolling. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, after years of this, you know, habit taking place at 420, right. um, it just kind of picked up on American iconic culture. Okay. And uh, now you hear it in rap videos and whatnot, 420 this, 420 that. There's right. another brewery that actually sued us at one point and lost. For really? The, uh, oh, really? For the use of, of 420. Wow. Um, yeah, like, we, yeah. We've been sued a bunch. And, yeah. and have done a fair amount of suing ourselves. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's <laughs> part of growing up in the 90s as a brewery. <laughs> right. um, but, you know, the, the Waldo Special Ale, uh, you know, we, we invite those guys to come back because right. the trail that they took was the same trail that led us from Lagunitas, California, which is why we're named Lagunitas, okay. to Petaluma, where the brewery, the main brewery is today, and what most people think of when they okay. think of Lagunitas. Um, it's a beautiful trail. It's a. Uh, uh, a nice bike ride, and that's why Tony McGee decided, the founder decided to take that road to okay. Petaluma was because it was aesthetically pleasing to him to go from one place to another. Right. And uh, when we found out there was that link that they kind of went on the same the same hunt that we did, um, we invited them to make the beer. And you know, this year it sits at eleven point three percent alcohol. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the only officially noted triple IPA in Lagunitas. <laughs> is, uh, is that what this wow. is called? Trip really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's the only one that we officially call a triple IPA. Yeah. Um, I make it every year for 420. Yeah. This is, uh, I could, this is good trouble, isn't it? All these beers we're talking about, you can <laughs> find them at Lagunitas.com, by the yeah, way. That's for right. sure. For sure. And you can actually find them to purchase at uh, ABC Total Wines, your local liquor stores, uh, your um, Winn Dixie's, your Walmart's, even have some of them. Um, so do. you can pretty much get them out there and, and wherever you go. And on draft, just they're all over. Yeah. You can pretty much find them anywhere. You got them, you know, we, we talk about McKay's, you got it there, Brass Tap. Um, you've got them all over the place. We have them out and about. Half walls, so all of them. Half walls. Uh, you know, no, is Waldo's in. anywhere right now? Anybody want to check Waldo's is right? gone uh, okay. because it came in as what they call the one hitters. <laughs> yeah. Wait till <laughs> um, next year. <laughs> we, yeah. we actually may have a few packages left at Total Wine. Okay. Uh, I will say Waldo's, uh, my, my busy season, as we talked about, yeah. is the first part of the year when it's cooler right. and we do all these beer fests. I would bring this to every beer fest and this would be the first one to go That's at phenomenal. all the beer fests for yeah. sampling. So the Waldo's is, uh, you know, for an 11.2% beer, there again, yeah. um, they're able to hide that alcohol mm-hmm. a little bit. I saw the smile on your face. Oh, yeah. And, oh, yeah. and, and and you're all good with that. It just, it brings it out. And it's got a great flavor profile. There again, it's, you know, great flavor, great beer, great everything. So you're not, you're not trying to hide anything it's just a good beer yeah, yeah if, for sure if and you could find this it's a dangerous beer is <laughs> yeah, good good dangerous yes, yes good dangerous so and i just wanted to point out here too a lot of our or all of our one hitters except for one of them um have this purple cap so if you're looking for the beer and uh for some reason you're you're not able to read it you get something special with take the a look at the cap. uh at like the purple that. cap and that's that's going to denote one hitter Dang. absolutely Lagunitas people are thinking about everything. They have everything under control. Uh, really? You. I um, love your terminology, too. Yeah, it's absolutely. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so well, we have kind of a very thing. creative team. Um, if uh, You mentioned the website. If people want to go on um, and look at some of the videos we have, we have Mumbler videos. 
Um, yeah. If you look at every bottle, it's got the the brewery phone number on it. And somebody, if you call it, somebody's going to answer it. Really. Um, but if you call after hours, after you've had a few, uh, we will record it and we will animate it. Good. And Good. we have several times. If you well, look at the videos, yes, we have that. We're doing it. <laughs> we're 100% we need to. we're doing it. Probably so, in about an hour. Guess so, what I'm doing after the show. <laughs> <laughs> They'll send me uh, reports, quarterly reports, and it's, um, it's the puppets. Uh, it looks like Waldorf and Statler. Yeah. Uh, from the Muppets, and they'll oh, yeah. sit there and tell us like about them. everything. It looks yeah. like them. It's not them, right. but it's two old guys. Yeah. It's them. two old guys talking and just telling us how the reports are. So it's they, Tom and John. Tom and John. <laughs> yeah. Is it possible that um, – oh, Tom and John. Yeah. Is it possible that we can tell the story about censored? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And if need to, we can censor the censored yeah. story. So yeah. this Go right is, ahead. Yeah. Oh, we got a bunch of fun stories, man. Yeah. All right, so – um, do you mind if I grab some more beer? No, that's fine. Yeah, Vinny, absolutely. for crying out loud, we can't um, listen to a story really thirsty. Can. Yep, absolutely. Thanks, man. All right. All right. So, is, is there any more of that first one left? Um, yep. Well, well, we, we got, got you another we got a whole can. cooler back there, man. Got a whole yeah. cooler. Yeah. Yeah. Of beer. <laughs> well, if you're going to be that's drinking, a, I'm going to drink with you. That's the right. after party. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. All right, censor. Hell yeah. yeah. Thank you, Heck man. yeah. What's going on? You, can say, you can say hell. It's fine. Speaking of censored. All right, so yeah, so what got censored? All right, so. Uh, there's a government governing body, a federal governing body called the TTB that regulates a lot of things for us to make sure that everything's safe and, you know, right. not offensive. Right. And um, part of that is label approval. Okay. So um, we uh, submitted a label for approval called the Chronic. Okay. And um, the Chronic was, you know, a, 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 as, as you may infer, refers to something else that also happens to be in Northern California. It's a Dr. Dre to. record, I believe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the what, yeah. chronic. Yeah. We, so, um, <laughs> so we got approved and we printed. And um, somebody's, it, w- I imagine, happens, as legend has it. Sure. Somebody's son kind of narked on us within the TTV. It was like, oh, the chronic, that means oh, this. You know? man. So the last minute they said, no, 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 we, we, we messed that one up. Yeah, <laughs> right. So uh, you spell it differently, right? So we needed to submit something. We had, you know, our labels already printed. We're going into package. What are we going to oh. do? We bought a bunch of censored stickers and stuck them on, and got that approved. Brilliant. And uh, brilliant. Yeah. So yeah, isn't was, it true that every year the censored gets smaller and smaller? It does. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So you can so see, you can see, see more, more, of, more and more and more every brilliant. year of the chronic. That's brilliant. So there's a ton of stories we could talk about, like undercover shutdown and all yeah, stuff. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, and uh, just tell one more with the undercover, yeah. and then that's a great story as well. So the undercover shutdown, um, you know, the beer weasel, as, as his business card would say, uh, Ron Lindenbush, is, uh, I mean, about as tenured of a, of a logging eater as you're going to get. Right. Um, and, you know, he was at the tap room in, uh, in Petaluma. Uh, pretty much every night, you know, for about a decade mm-hmm. at least, right. and um, you know, we have a we have a certain reputation for uh, for partaking in in mm-hmm. in what we talked about yeah. before. Sure, and uh, snacks. Yeah, and and they wanted to uh, pull a sting, see if we were illegally selling uh, oh. an, an illicit substance. Sure, and. Um, so they came, they set up this thing, and uh, tried to solicit, and didn't get anywhere. And then they did it again and again, and then for six weeks in a row, wow, um, they came and tried to get us. And it's a lot of work, right? So finally, um, they came guns blazing, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, came pretty aggressive, and uh, you know, tried this is to, like at the tap room. Or? Yeah, this is at, this is at the tap room with, okay. with customers. Wow, and, yeah, people hanging out and having a good time, drinking beer. Okay. All right, and um, you know. We're, we're almost in a harassing way asking to, to purchase something illegal. <laughs> and uh, Ron, as, as the, the manager in charge, yeah. um, said, guys, I, I'm going to pull you away. We don't, we don't do that. We don't tell anything like that. But if you'd like, here's a joint. Let's go smoke it. And they, they locked them up for that. <laughs> wow. And, uh, it's a good shiny thing to yeah. distract them. So, yeah. Um, but you know, to to abbreviate the story a bit, um, we had to shut the brewery down for ten days. So knowing that was going to be the case, um, we had a beer that was in in the bright tanks after after fermentation right. that we decided, you know, what, we'll go ahead and dry hop it. And then for ten days, it sat in the dry hop, and oh. it was a different beer than we intended, and uh, you know, kind of kind of something cool. Yeah. And you called it undercover shutdown. Yeah, really. Yeah, it's still no. called the undercover it's a shutdown beer. investigation Jeez. ale. Investigation ale. So there's a lot more stories behind it. That's great. Like if you go to loganitas.com, uh, you can see a bunch of stuff. And that's yeah. nice about these breweries that have been around a while. They, you know, they fought hard mm-hmm. to, to 
bring craft beer where it is now. You know, right. the the Sam Adams of the world, the Sierra Nevadas of the world, the Lagunitas of the world, the Brooklyns of the world. They've been around a long time, and um, yeah. they put up with all the stuff back then, you know, when it was even tougher to try to get a name. You had to be very careful what you called. You couldn't yeah. have this. You couldn't have that. A little more liberal now, I think, on, on what they're doing with names because they're running out of names, you know, so you have to come up with something a little bit different. But Lagunitas fought the fight back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and again, you know, I... I, I didn't work for the brewery in the beginning, mm-hmm. um, and uh, you know I was as a home brewer um, in Florida here. Um, you know I was introduced to IPA really like good fresh IPA, right. uh, basically through Lagunitas in 2007 when they launched in the state. So I mean for me, all I know is, is the calibration of IPA what it should be is, is Lagunitas, and right. I, I feel like it's always lived up to that standard. Um, but. You know, you're right. If if not for those guys and Pete's and, and some of the ones the that Pete's that are wicked. Calling. Yep. Yeah. Everybody else that oh, are gone really? now. Yeah. So they were they were heavy fighters for the thing. Um, yeah. And you know the whole we always talk about how the craft community you always run into people again mm-hmm. and you talk to them. Yeah. I've dealt with Andy on two different levels He's now. Dealt with me. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. dealt. I've dealt. I've dealt with Andy. With those big hands. I've dealt with Andy. <laughs> yeah. uh, he worked for another uh, brewery, a Terrapin, yeah. and came in and um, he took over for a guy that was phenomenal. The guy was awesome. He, he actually is, has phenomenal. He is phenomenal. Yeah, I shouldn't say talk like he's gone he's not yeah. Yeah. Um, he does 1010 brewing down in orlando so yeah. if you're ever down there great um but anyway, long story short we did great with terrapin and this guy comes walking through the door and i looked at him said i already don't like you and he's like why is it because you got rid of mike and now i got you i said you got big shoes to fill so yeah. Yeah, andy and i chubby peter brady i did i oh, called yeah. him a chubby <laughs> peter brady <laughs> <laughs> No, that's not, funny. It's not just you guys, I bust, just so you know. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so we, we proceeded to kill with Terrapin and did a great job. And then he left um, left the business or went to another uh, company. Uh, then he left the business. And then all of a sudden I got a phone call and he's like, hey, I'm coming back. I'm like, you're not selling Bug Killer anymore? He's like, nope, I'm coming Looking back, back. <laughs> and I'm going to be doing beer. So he came in with Lagunitas and yeah. stepped right back in. So that's yeah. why it's always good to make sure you're working with your people and because you never know. Yeah. You know? Well, and that, that's a good testament for the community, man. I've, I've had a very fortunate career so far to work for some great breweries. And the, the thing I could say about Lagunitas that I love the most, yeah. aside, I love the liquid, right? But the culture here is just phenomenal. Yeah. We, we take care of our folks. Family. And, it's yeah. very well, family. it is. It is it, it, I, I feel like it's probably like radio a little bit, too. You talk about the censorship part of it where we have to, we have to stay inside mm-hmm. the yeah. FCC guidelines. We Absolutely. have to watch what we say. We have to clear stuff. And then additionally, you have the, uh, the community there that is it's competitive, but... But they're all supposed to be friendly. Even though they're huge, yeah. everybody kind of works together. Yeah. I mean, if there's an issue, I mean, if you down route tape one of their names, yeah, of course they're going to. Yeah, we're going to sue you. It doesn't matter. The little guys are doing it to each other, yeah. you know. That's right. So that's just one thing in the community, and you don't want to do that. But otherwise, they work with each other. I'm sure they share. In the beginning, they shared hops with other breweries that needed them, and oh, malts, yeah. and you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So. so you know, again, not not to plug another another uh, uh, website or or, or or group, but. Uh, thebrewingnetwork.com is has been like the uh, the I think the benchmark for getting brewing knowledge out from professionals to home brewers and building community right. within the within the internet world for a long time. Right. And um, you know Jeremy Marshall is uh, you know a staple on the show for the most part. I mean you can go on and find out how to brew a little something something and Lagunitas IPA with recipes and specs and all this other stuff. It's all available on YouTube. And, really. You know, or thebrewingnetwork.com. Yeah. yeah. But uh, we've been pretty open about it. You know we give people. Give people yeast, give people hops. Yeah, absolutely. Well, for um, a guy like you that was doing homebrew like that, was that? I mean, did you ever imagine that you'd be, you'd be here hooked up with a big national brand like that, or did, were you? I've had all kinds of weird imaginative yeah. ideas, man. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, am I in any of those? Yeah. 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 Vinny, Vinny's in at least, I'd say six of those ideas. I'm yeah. excited. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Right. wow. Now we got wait. the squirrel idea. There's a seventh idea. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So we're good. <laughs> I yeah. like it. Um, we'll move on to the next one. Speaking of. <laughs> yeah, speaking of. <laughs> we have the, the dark swan. So okay. um, for a long time, uh, Tony McGee decided to put his foot down and say, we're, we're not, we're not going to put fruit in beer. Okay. And then we did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then it happened. Then it happened, man. Okay. Then uh, we, you know, as a sales team, we were loud enough to, uh, to demand it. So um, this is a, um, a slightly tart sour ale holy crap um, yeah it's purple um <laughs> we have a, a nice a physical neighbor of ours um that i'll, I'll drink it in a second mm. you're behind buddy. i know i'm behind what's going on usually oh, yeah. you keep up 
I'm, uh, I'm, I'm rattling things off. I got you. So uh, <laughs> rattling, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Last name's Ratner, Ratlin. Yeah, so. yeah. So uh, they use petite sora grapes. They okay. they grew them locally. I mean, Holy I'm talking about shit. Petaluma. Mm-hmm. So we threw them into the beer and decided if we're gonna make a fruit beer, we're gonna make it with stuff from around town. I, I've told you before about this uh, that lambic uh, that. Uh, What's the lambic stuff that I like? Uh, Lindemann's yeah, lambic, lambic yeah, yeah. And, yeah. I'm throwing up the garbage now. Uh, this is it. That's it. That's, that's, that's the way jam. to go. Okay. That's your jam. Guys, no, literally. Guys, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. As soon as I saw the name and heard him talk about it and then I saw him pour it, I was scared and I thought I was going to have to fake liking it. Yeah. But after the first sip, if there's any more of those in that cooler, it's the, screw you guys. They're mine. The, <laughs> they're mine. <laughs> it's, One thing about Tony, too, is he, you know, the principles do work out a lot of the time. Yeah. If you grab a physical bottle, sure. Right. He he was into a lot of this stuff. I mean, he's into music. And he's, he's he's touring around right now with Paul Thorne, um, really? doing uh, tales and ales shows, right, where they really? tell stories and oh, cool. song and it's freaking awesome. But there's a physical touch to a Lagunitas label. It's a matted label, right? right? And if uh, his thought was, if you're at a smoky bar and maybe you've had one too many, yeah, you might not be able to to remember what what it tastes like. But you always remember the feel. It's a great a point. It feels bottles. like it feels like a rustic yeah. newspaper feel. You know, yeah. the, here you go. You can rub it, and touch it. Yeah, yeah. It feels like newsprint. <laughs> you know, or, or or papyrus. If I yeah. could go back to the uh, ancient Roman days. And, and obviously, that's that's a, an expense that when he was running the brewery based on credit card debt and having Peter to pay Paul, <laughs> we bet. probably didn't need to pay for the more expensive no. labeling. But he stuck to his guns, man. That's what yeah. we're gonna do. Yeah. It worked out. That's Thank awesome. You. Well, I mean, talking about doing it. I mean, you you deal with tons and tons of different beers, tons Absolutely. of different people, all kinds of different stuff. Is, is anybody doing it their way more than these guys? Um, uh, I haven't seen one. Uh, they're out there doing it. Yeah. I mean, they definitely are. They're yeah. out there pushing and going. And like he said, it's a culture. It's not just the beer. It's a culture. When you say Lagunitas, usually ninety five percent of the time, people's mm-hmm. eyes light up. Yeah. They know IPA. They know Lagunitas. They're right. like Lagunitas. Yes, mm-hmm. I know that. Half of them can't pronounce it, right? But it's they okay. know it's Lagunitas, and they're ready to go. Yeah. And yeah. it's that whole culture. Yeah, it is. Well, it's the craft beer culture, basically, is what they sure. created for sure. And we've we've been lucky to come up in a time where, you know, we were ahead of the wave a little bit, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, kind of set the trend. Well, at least at least help influence where things may may be going and be a part of it. It's mm-hmm. kind of an honor. So, um, oh my, God, you have so good, yeah, man. You guys have a brewery in you burp. yeah. Huh? So, what do you burp? Yeah. Tastes better when you bourbon. <laughs> really? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you guys have a brewery in Petaluma, correct? We do. You have a brewery in Chicago. Yep. Okay. That's and the big one. Is there any other ones? We have uh, a tap room in uh, Seattle that's open now. Okay. Um, we have another facility in uh, in Azusa, right? Yeah, there you go. It's on the website. Look at that. <laughs> With the Bouncing Cherry Jane, oh, which nice. is the, the new- uh, Sour, right? New sour ale, yeah. Uh, so Azusa is the, uh, you know, it's basically L.A. County, um, like East L.A., mm-hmm. inland. Um, but that's, uh, that's an area where we're going to be doing the, uh, the, the hop water and uh, a lot of the um, uh, barrel aging beers and, and uh, so, barrel aging projects and stuff like so that. So we're at the tail end here. Um, you want to tell them what the hop water is? Yeah. Well, the hop water itself is something that uh, it's a non-alcoholic product. It's a sparkling water that's been dry hopped. We use uh, an extraction method. Um, for for I mean we're using real hops, mm-hmm. but we're using an extraction method in 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 the you know in the making of that product right. that um, doesn't isomerize the alpha acids. So what that means is it won't be light struck if you put it in the sun and and have to worry about that. Okay. Or, or put it next to a, a cooler light or something like sure. that. Typically with beer, you know, we use brown bottles or yeah. ideally kegs or cans, right. so that no light can hit it and it won't won't skunk the beer. Technically. Yeah. When you skunk a beer, it's because of light, right? Okay. Yeah. So these these are much more resistant to uh, to skunking. I, I would say almost entirely resistant to, to skunking. Um, so you have this dry hopped water that's you know pretty wonderful. If you want to carbonated, add alcohol, yeah, it's carbonated, yeah, yeah sparkling water. Um, but if you wanted to add alcohol, it makes a nice a nice mixer for for a cocktail. But for me, um, in between a couple, you know, throw throw one yeah. of those in to hydrate. But I don't want to. Sure. Drink boring water for me. Yeah. Right, are you right. guys uh, doing anything else with that hop water? Uh, we are selling it to a company called uh, Absolute Extracts, and then they, using a collaborative Lagunitas partnership, are in California right now. California only are coming out with two uh, two products. That's the Hi-Fi hop water, high fidelity. Um, mm-hmm. 
And uh, that's a uh, five milligrams CBD oil, five milligrams THC, and Ooh. then we have a ten milligram THC ready to get you. Really? And that's all legal out in yeah. California and, and ready yeah. to go out there. That's, so. that's yep, ready to absolutely. go. And then uh, you know, we're, we're going to be testing that out. It's brand new. It's something yeah. fun and exciting that we're, that we're looking at. Um, we made a beer. I'm booking a plane ticket to yeah, California really? right now. <laughs> really? I mean, we'll, we'll get you set up on the tour, do, man. Do the show for a whole week over there, I think. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we should do one of those we talked about. Between your busted shoulder and my squirrel bite? We're good. We need that. Absolutely. It's medicinally, right? Medicinally. You look like you have a little touch of glaucoma, too. I do. I, I would fancy. love I to see you, you drink that. <laughs> I would love to see you drink that. No, it would be fun. Wouldn't it? We'll do the show. Well, you guys were talking about doing a remote. What if we did it out in California? I'm ready. All right, cool. I'm, I'm sure. All let's right, go. let's just talk. I'll talk to my company. You talk to your company. They'll both say no, but we'll try it anyway. Yeah, right. They'll say no, and then we'll work from there. That's just right. go, go and do it. And yeah, hand in the receipts. Yeah, hand the receipts. Yeah. It. No, what if we? Out. What if we paid for the plane tickets ourselves? Oh, that's a possibility. And then we did it. Oh yeah, maybe get I, set okay. up. And, okay, we'll see what we can do. I'm game. My landlord's a pilot. Maybe I could just get a get us a sweet. A all right, that's it. We're going to put this all together after we're done with the show. We're going to sit down, figure out the logistics, and we're going yeah. to Lagunitas. I like yeah. it. We're this ready to go. This is a creative out. meeting that's happening Absolutely. right here. Yeah, going you on. saw this happen. Well, you know, uh, years ago, uh, back in uh, uh, Roman days, the Senate would have a meeting sober, and then they would have a meeting drunk. And oh. then they would figure out between the two because yeah. when you're when you're drinking, your inhibitions are let wild. That's right. And when you're sober, you're able to organize and do what you have to do. So they would get the opinions when they were drunk, sure. and you get the opinions when they were sober, and then figure out what they had to do. Our so. best ideas for the show come in the text after 11 p.m. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Is everybody wearing their pants though? That's the only question. <laughs> no, he's below the console. Is he? Okay. All, right. All right, guys. Before we cut out, somewhere in this video. You guys can log on to the Facebook page right now and see the video. Somewhere in this video, we have hidden an Easter egg, and you're going to look for the Lagunitas splotch, and if you find it, you win a hat, just like the one I've been wearing the whole time. So you find that Lagunitas splotch that just pops up randomly, like you get moving. a hat. <laughs> thank you, Lagunitas, for that. Guys, yeah. thank you yeah. for having us. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you very sure. much. Uh, Vinny, after party? After party. Let's do it. Let's roll. Rock and roll. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Simple and easy, huh? Yeah? Thank you.